Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to the Gals Web. It's winter 2020-2023 forecast. Wow, 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 here we are then. After 13 winter updates, three seasonal roundups, the NAA forecast and the, win and the summer preambles, we have arrived at the end of the line and we are going to be delivering the uh, Gals Web forecast for you in this video. So I shall get something that for you in a second. I just want to say thank you so much to Richard for our lovely, lovely, lovely Gasworthy's uh, winter forecast. Dear, thank you so much, Richard. Uh, thank you so much for both the uh, winter updates, Diff, and our lovely, lovely exclusive winter forecast gift. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Richard, uh, for that. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I love the gift. Thank you so much to uh, Shrine as well. Thank you so much to Terry Scully. Thank you so much to Richard for all of the help on all of the winter updates and on this winter forecast in a moment and start off with the swingometer so you will see for the final time how the uh, swingo is looking after 13 uh winter updates and uh, all of the all of the updates that we've been doing you know since the summer really uh how how the swingometer looks right at the very end and then i shall show you the, the spreadsheet from tearing the, all of the uh leading years for this year, uh, for this year's winter updates, and then we'll have a look at the data itself, then I should give you the forecast, it's going to be an epic, epic video, sit back, relax, enjoy the Gowsworthy's winter 2022-2023 forecast is upon us, please like, share, subscribe, thank you so much everybody for doing that, we're premiering this winter forecast, and hello to all of you in the premiere, I'm in there with you, so uh, I hope you're having a good time, are you having a good time, yay, uh, <laughs> Have a good time in the premiere. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, for tuning in. Right, so first we're going to do is bring you the swingometer for the last time. This is how the swingo is looking as of thirteen updates of, as of the end of the third, uh, as of the end of the thirteen. Uh, winter update last week. So for the final time, three, two, one, here we go. Do we have a verdict? Do we have a verdict? Yes, I have a verdict. It's 50 50. Gals over the swingometer is 50 50. Poised between cold and mild after. 13 updates. The final swingometer says it's 50-50. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much, Richard. Not only for the final swingometer, but for the swingometer throughout this season of updates. Thank you so much, Rich. Incredible and amazing. Thank you so much, my friend. Gosh, we're poised, everybody. We're poised between cold and mild at 50-50. Right, well, let's move over to uh, the spreadsheet then. So Terry Scully, our lovely friend Terry, has been keeping uh, the uh, spreadsheet updated for us. Thank you so much, Terry, uh, for uh, keeping uh, keeping the spreadsheet updated. So uh, just to explain what, what we're looking at here, everything that we've been dealing with in our... Uh, winter updates is listed uh, in the spreadsheet. So we've got our years on the side from 1950 all the way down to uh, 20, uh, 21, 22. And uh, we've got, for example, QBO phase just here. So the cycle phase just there. We've got uh, top 10 driest August, for example. Here we've got um, September CT of 14.2 to 14. Point seven. We've got Eastern Base La Nina Autumns, and we've got uh, the Ace Hurricane uh, Ace uh, just there, etc. etc. We've got November England and Wales rainfall at one hundred and thirty to one hundred seventy millimeters, uh, and we've also got a top ten uh, mildest autumn. Terry has put in a column of his own, an extra column. For us, which is cold southern hemisphere stratosphere in August. Now, this is related to the eruption of the uh, of the volcano back earlier on 
in the year at Tonga, I think it was. So, uh, extra column put in there from uh, Terry. And thank you so much, Terry, uh, for that. So, on the side uh, of the chart here, we've got the total number of hits in any given year uh, for the season of uh, updates. So, for example, you see that the first year, 1915-1951, had two hits. Um, we've got 1953-1954 just here, which uh, of course had a lot more hits. That had three hits, for example, just there. Uh, we've got five hits for 19, uh, 1950, 1950, well, no, 1959-1960, just here, five hits there. Um, so. All of the years that have one, two, three, or four hits are discounted. They're, they're removed, uh, and, you know, we don't think they're, they're good enough to be relevant for this year of updates. So the years that uh, have, uh, have got more than that, we've got five, six, or a maximum of seven hits, uh, that year just there, which is going to be... If I can uh, roll this along, let's see what year that is. So that is 54, 55, and we've got uh, 55, 56 with six hits just there coming further down. We have also got uh, that year just there, which is 75, 76. That has six hits. Uh, 76, 77 has six hits as well. We've got five hits just here, which is 7980, I think. Uh, we have also got down here seven hits. Big match for 84-85. And at five hits, we've got 85-86 just there. Uh, we've got five hits for that year, which is 1990 got six hits for that year just there which is 95 96 uh we've also got another year with six hits just here which is going to be and in a moment i will show you in table format our leading years of course so this year just here let's trace that along that's uh, 2006 2007 uh, and then we've also got five hits just here, uh, which again, I think, if we can trace that along, what's that, that's 2014, 15, so yeah, you know, there, there are leading analogue years, so I'm going to go here. These are them. Thank you so much, Terry, for the spreadsheet. Uh, that's incredible. Thank you so much, Terry, for keeping the spreadsheet updated. I wish I had longer. I wish I had longer to go through all of the data uh, year by year. I have not got enough time. You know, I've got to get on with the forecast. But thanks so much, Terry. Uh, it's amazing, incredible, the work that Terry does. So these are the years. Shrian has done a table for us. These are the years. We've got five hits with 2014-2015. We've got five hits, 1990-1991. We've got Five hits, 1985, 1986. We've got five hits, 1978, 1979. We've got five hits, 1959, 1960. With six hits, we've got 2015, uh, 2016. We've got 2006, 2007. We've got 2003, 2004. We've got 95, 96 with six hits. We've got 76, 77 with six hits. We've got 1975, 1976 with six hits, and we've also got 1955, 1956 with six hits. Uh, with seven hits, we've got three uh, years with seven hits. We've got 2001, 2002, we've got 1984, 1985, and we've got 1954, uh, 1955 with seven hits. They are our leading analogue years, and obviously the years with seven hits are, are like the biggest leaders, but they are the leaders with five, six, and seven hits. So, let's go through the data then. So, this is how all Decembers combined are looking uh, with the uh, years that have five hits or more. 
So basically, this is, uh, this is all years, you know, uh, with five hits or more, all the samples combined. Looks rather unsettled with below average heights around the country and to our south and east. Rather an unsettled signal for the Decembers. All January's combined, scoring five hits or more, raises the blocking signal quite considerably, and we get higher pressure setting up within the northern latitudes, while low pressure forms to our south and east, and winds are coming in from the east or northeast direct. So a colder signal for the January's, potentially. And then all February's combined for years scoring five hits or more. Again, with strong blocking around Greenland and Iceland. Big low pressure there, big high pressure there. Low pressure is to the south, winds in from the east. So uh, again, January and February both potentially looking quite cold uh, with our leading analogue years. And all winters combined for leading analogue years scoring five hits or more. Looks like that. Again, high pressure is blocking around Greenland. Low pressure is to the south. Winds in from the east or from the northeast. A very unsettled and wintry signal, potentially, for those winters. Obviously, less so in December and, and more so through January and February. So, for our lean analog years for years, scoring five hits or more, all of them, basically, um, much of northern Europe is looking cold, and that cold air does back uh, back into uh, into the UK and Ireland. So, this is uh, how the temperature looks for those uh, years, scoring five or more, and a cold winter is likely for precipitation for those years, scoring five or more. Uh, we look like that's a rather dry winter. Uh, looks like, especially so to more northern and west areas, right, because of the blocking and the southerly tracking jet stream, of course. Well, let's start narrowing things down a little bit more to the years that score six or more. So, those years narrow things down to 54, 55, 95, 90, uh, 1955, 1956, 1975, 1976, uh, 76, 77, 84, 85, 95, 96, uh, 2001, 2, 2000, and 2, 3, 2005, 6, and uh, 2015, 16. This is how all December's combined are looking now, and we have much more anticyclonic signal for these uh, December's. The higher pressure tends to go uh, uh, northwards as well. So that could be a drier and colder signal. I don't mean to be all that precise with the position of the anticyclone uh, with that, but the idea is that it's a more anticyclonic month, it's a drier, but potentially also colder month for those Decembers scoring six or more. All well, January is combined for um, six or more a hit within our winter uh, forecast and updates methodology shows blocking again around Greenland. Low pressure goes southwards and winds come in from an east or a northeast direction. So, looking quite a cold signal there for the January's. All February's combined still has a, quite a strong blocking signal, but probably takes the top of low pressure a little bit further northwards, if anything. So, um, it's a less clear cut. It could still be cold in February, but it's a less clear cut signal, um, you know, once, once we get into uh, February there. Looks quite unsettled as well. All winters combined for uh, the year scoring six or more look like that. We get blocking around Greenland and Iceland. We get low pressure more towards the south. Winds coming in from a cold easterly uh, direction. Remember, uh, each month is individual. Out of the three, I would say January looks potentially uh, the coldest there. The temperature uh, for uh, the leading analog years during six or more looks like that. Still a very cold winter for much of northern Europe. We just about bat that, I think, to the UK and Ireland, but it's, we're not quite as cold as we are in the year scoring five or more. Um, nevertheless, I think still a colder than average northern European winter is expected, and particularly cold uh, by looking at it for northern Europe, Scandinavia. And in terms of precipitation for year scoring uh, six or more, we look like this. 
again, a rather dry winter is expected. And then uh, going on to the final three, and I'm not sure how seriously we take these, really, because um, they're very different winters, and like 54th, we've got 54th, 85, 84, 85, and 2001, 2002. Now, 54th, 55 is around uh, soda minimum. We've got 84, 85, which is getting close to soda minimum, and it's a hail winter. Uh, and then we've got 2001 2, which is uh, just after um, a big solar maxima. So, further on in the solar cycle and whatnot. But anyway, these are the, these are the lean three. So, it's how all Decembers combined are uh, looking uh, for our lean analog gear scoring seven hits. Uh, again, anti-cyclonic signal, high pressure through the country and reaching up to Scandinavia. So it could be a little bit easterly. It's interesting, isn't it? Could bring in easterly winds with those um, with both temps. Again, quite a dry sort of signal as well with those. Uh, that's how the temperature looks for both December. So um, I mean, it could average across France. So it's like average a bit on the cool side, I think, for both Decembers. Notice warmer within high latitudes and again a rather dry signal uh, for those um decembers as well if anything <coughs> i'm so sorry everybody this is how all january is combined looking for the year's better scoring seven hits the top three and uh, again we find that we increase the heights within at the normal latitudes high pressure around greenland we send the low pressure areas southwards so this looks like it should be a signal for relatively cold weather in the january is a blocking signal temperature anomaly goes colder across particularly northern europe that does extend back into west europe as well bear in mind this does include the very cold january of 1985 so that's probably why that is uh, taking place there also we have a cold january 1995 january 2002 is milder a cold january predicted there then top three and also a relatively dry january as well that is one thing that's standing out quite a dry uh, winter after this wet autumn and then uh, february or oh, february for the final three looks like that uh with low pressure a little bit further north so high pressure blocking goes more towards the canadian side of green so it's still blocked but we're on the mild side of, of the lows still a little bit on the cool side However, still slightly below average temperature. Bear in mind, uh, February 2002 was a very mild month, however. And uh, looking rather wet as well. Looking rather wet with those uh, Februarys, which are slightly above average rainfall. And then all winters uh, combined for the top three. This is how uh, they're looking. So, again, we do have that blocking signal that's in evidence around Greenland with lower pressure to be more to the south. Bear in mind that it particularly so in January, but have a cold block set up. I mean, a lot less so for February and, and December, somewhere in between. In between. Overall, a, a rather slightly cold and average winter is uh, indicated there very cold winter for northern europe so those are in northern europe uh all of these analogs whether it's uh, five six or seven uh combined you know they're all indicating a very cold northern european winter and as far as precipitation is concerned a rather dry winter is indicated uh as well there Rather dry winter indicated. Right, so that's how the data uh, stacks up. I shall pause the video. This will give us a big laugh in the uh, in the premiere. I shall pause the video, and um, when I come back, when we restart, uh, we I will give you the gas weather's winter forecast. So see you in around two seconds from now. Okay, <laughs> big laugh in the premiere. What a break that was, wasn't it? What did you do? Did you have a nice time? I had a good time in the break. I uh, had a few glasses of magic water and uh, and a few nibbles as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for tuning in to the Gazwell's Winter 2022-2023 forecast. So, in the first part of the uh, video, in the first part of the uh, forecast, 
we went through the data. We looked at the spreadsheet from Terry. Thank you, Sarah, Terry, for the spreadsheet. Uh, we looked at those leading analog years. Thank you so much to Shryan for narrowing down those years for us and went through the data. And, uh, of course, we saw that the swingometer is poised at 50-50. So, thank you, Sarah, to Rich. Now, all that's left to do is uh, give you the... Um, the forecast. And I can tell you that we are going to be predicting an average to slightly colder than average uh, winter. So that's the first sort of headline, I suppose. The gas worth is winter forecast is for average to slightly below average by about half a degree, something like that, maybe up to one degree below the uh, 81 to uh, 2010 average. Something in that order. So not an extremely cold winter, although we don't rule out possibility that could happen more about that in a second but a slightly below average temperature is expected for this winter we're also expecting a drier than average winter as well so that was a big standout with all of those analogs but this winter should be rather dry probably february if anything coming out as the wettest month and what we're expecting to happen with this winter is that it gets milder and wetter later on so we are thinking that winter's going to be a little bit front loaded so december likely to be a little bit colder than average uh we think um, and we also think january is probably going to be cold and average as well now january could be the coldest month to average due to the fact that it could get really quite cold for a, for a little while during the earlier part of the month then we expect that things will get milder uh, you know, later on into January. And so um, it probably doesn't come out with an excessively cold, as an excessively cold month due to the first half being offset by a second half. But um, we probably uh, get the coldest weather of the winter, you know, through the early part of January. And February likely to be a, a rather milder, wetter uh, type month. So, so front loaded, coldest, earliest, mildest, latest, wettest, latest as well. But overall, a little bit below average and a little bit drier than average too. There is a big, big caveat with this forecast and um, there's a big wild card that we had to throw into the mix and that is the possibility of a sudden stratospheric warming we're starting off the winter with quite a lot of siberian blocking siberian high in strength though, and uh, that can sometimes cause planetary waves that develop into a sudden stratospheric warming so we're expecting that there probably will be an ssw this winter i would think most likely through sort of christmas new year early mid-January, sometime in that window, so right in the heart of winter. Um, and and the effects of that SSW are very unknown because we're starting off with tropospheric blocking at the moment, but not supporting, you know, not beginning in the stratosphere. We've got quite a cold stratosphere at the moment. Because we've got tropospheric blocking, it could be that when the SSW occurs, it actually takes the, the tropospheric blocking away. Uh, from our side of the uh, our side of the northern hemisphere, and and of course that would tie in with what we're expecting with the winter forecast, which is to turn milder and wetter later on through the winter. However, it is possible that that, that SSW, if it occurs, could just um, reinforce the blocking. You know, it could strengthen the blocking and it could lock it in into the middle and then the second half of the winter. If that happens, then we will come away with a much colder winter than we are predicting here. And there is the possibility, but we could actually come away with quite quite a you know a very cold winter, maybe even quite a severe winter, if that blocking was to lock in, courtesy of an SSW later on in winter. We are expecting that. I don't think that's likely, but it is a possibility, given that I think this year we will get uh, some stratospheric warming via this, um, you know, via this strength and side being high that we are starting off uh, the winter with. Um, in terms of snowfall, I suspect the early part of winter will be the snowiest part, and then, you know, it'll be more towards rain later on winter, maybe a little bit above average uh, for, for snowfall and for snow days, especially in December and in January as well. But, of course, if the blocking was to lock in, then we will see the snow risk extending on into the second half half of winter and into February uh, as well. So there's a lot to play for with this uh, winter. There's a lot to keep an eye on. And as a result, confidence is only like moderate, really, for this forecast. I haven't got, a, a, you know, strong, strong confidence in this forecast. It could end up as a milder winter, but we're anticipating, but it could end up as a colder winter than we are anticipating.
anticipating as well. It's another complicated forecast to get together. It has been. Uh, and uh, and we've just got to play it by ear. We will be reviewing this forecast in the middle of January. So we're going to do a January review this year. See how the forecast is doing at halfway point. I think that'll be Sunday the 15th of January. See how we're doing at halfway point. And um and and then uh you know if anything needs changing or tweaking then 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 we'll uh, we'll do that uh once we get beyond the halfway mark for uh for the winter so that's it everybody that's the gals winter two thousand and twenty two thousand and twenty three forecast so I hope you found it interesting and informative I hope you enjoyed this journey of winter updates it's been epic hasn't it it's been a great year of winter updates and, and this time last year you know I was very unsure uh, whether I would ever get back you know to be able to do the long because I knew that things weren't right in the mouth and whatnot and uh, I didn't know where it was all gonna end up you know where, where, where I was gonna be at the end of treatment I knew I was gonna have to have treatment probably uh by this time last year you know and i didn't know where where that was going how i was going to finish up with that so um it turns out that, that the treatment went fine and i've been able to get back to the long range i'm just so pleased about that as well i've been doing these winter updates on a week by week basis i've been sort of pinching myself as i've been going along but yeah you know i'm back i'm doing it i'm able to get back at it and uh, it just goes to show i hope this you know if anybody else is suffering from not only cancer but any sort of medical uh issue or dilemma you know i hope this acts as an inspiration to say that um despite the the, the problem that you've got you know you can get back to the things that you love you can get back to it uh if uh, you know if, if you if you have good doctors and, and good treatment and uh, and you have the will you know to get back and you've all been uh, really willing me on and that has you know made a big difference so I thank you all so very much for giving me the support and, and the drive and the uh, you know the, the passion to, to to fight to fight to fight um, with cancer and and to get back to the weather and to get back to the long range and to get back to the lighting and to get back to all of the things that, that we love and, and and, you know, you've been absolutely amazing to me. Uh, really incredible. The Gals Webbers community has been unbelievable. And I thank you all so very, very much, you know, for, for the support. From the bottom of my heart, you know, absolutely from the bottom of my heart, I thank you all so very, very much. And I'm going to have to stop because I'm going to have to be, uh, I'll be, uh, you know, setting myself off in a moment. But please know that, that um, what you've done for me over these past few months to help me get back to to the weather and help me get back to the long range. We had to do these long videos. One hour, ten minute video last week. I didn't think I'd ever be able to do that again, you know, like 12 months ago. So thank you so much. Thank you so much to uh, Richard. Thank you so much to Shryan. Thank you so much to Terry for their help, not only on Winter Forecast, but also throughout this season of Winter Updates. Hashtag Team Gab has been a Amazing as always. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with is the uh, summary. So I shall be disappearing and I'll mute the webcam. And I'll leave you with the summary. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for sticking with this season of winter updates and for tuning in to this winter forecast. We shall see on the 15th of January how the forecast is doing and we'll make changes if needed. So uh, we'll see then. Thank you so much, everybody. And uh, bye for now. Just have a little look at the summary, though, uh, before we go.